what are the most important things to consider when it comes to improving cognitive function? A lot of people want better focus, they want to be more productive, they want to improve their mood, they want to do all of those things. Like, what are the big movers when we think cognitive function? So there's what I like to think of as there's definitely big movers. There's things that require effort and there's like lower hanging fruit, right? So this is things that like you could take a supplement perhaps. And I would say the big movers are the ones that of course are going to require more effort. Like that's always how it is, right? And it, it's pretty clear now. I don't think, I think it's pretty scientific consensus that exercise and particularly vigorous exercise is one of the best ways that you can get a cognitive enhancement, you know, memory, executive function, processing speed. So there've been studies that have been done in older adults, in middle-aged adults, in children, like across the lifespan. And it's just undeniable that getting your heart rate up, you know, getting getting your heart rate up and blood flow up and sweating is going to make you smarter and feel better. It's going to make you both. So um, like there was there was even one study that was done in older adults. And this was like a classic study that I, I just remember. I've talked about it for years, but other studies have like repeated it since then. But it was like 2011 or 20, 2012 published in PNAS. And um, this, this researchers took these older adults and they put them on a year-long intervention exercise program. And there was a lot of um, more vigorous intensity. So they're getting up to about 80% max heart rate, 75, 80% max heart rate. And um, for one year, they did this intervention. Um, and after that year, they had an, a 2% increase in their hippocampal volume. So hippocampus is a part of your brain that's highly involved in learning and memory. And they had increased it by like 2%. So people that it, in that age group lose between 1% to 2% of their hippocampal volume per year. So they essentially countered that loss that atrophy that they're they're age related, you know, experiencing each year, and um, and so part of the reason that happens is when you're doing a vigorous type of exercise, you are increasing brain derived neurotrophic factor (BDNF), and that is responsible for growing new neurons in the hippocampus. It's responsible for neuroplasticity, so that's the ability of your brain to like adapt and change to the changing environment, which is what older adults don't do very well, right? Your, your brain's much more plastic when it's younger; like you can adapt to things. That's why you, that's saying you, it's hard to teach an old dog new tricks, right? I mean, that's kind of where it comes from. So BDNF plays a role in that. So you want more BDNF, like you an exercise and particularly vigorous exercise. If you're working your muscles so hard that they can't get oxygen to them fast enough, and that's why I say vigorous, um, then they're forced to basically make energy without oxygen. And that happens by just using glucose. And then you make lactate as a byproduct. And lactate is what is signaling and increasing that BDNF. And lactate's really, I mean, you can measure it. There's, you know, things out there that you can buy and measure it. But I don't think you need to. I think you can just measure your heart rate. And if you're getting, if you're doing a vigorous intensity exercise, 10 minutes, that's all it took was 10 minutes to have improvements in cognition, uh, executive function, processing speed. So even just a 10 minute workout. And like I did one before I was came here. Like that's like, that's my thing. I do, you know, it's like, I want, I want to be on top of my game. So you just can do a 10 minute you know, workout. It could be high intensity interval training where you're shifting between periods of vigorous exercise and then kind of resting a little bit. And then so you do these intervals. Or it could just be like, I'm going to do a 20 minute like and run and then I'm going to go, you know, I'm going to do it. So um, exercise. Exercise is the number one, I would say, big mover, as you said. It's also the most requires the most effort. The other things, and this is where I kind of like, I'm smiling because. There was very recently a new study, um, one out of three very large randomized placebo-controlled trials where they're giving one group a placebo and another group a multivitamin. Okay, this is a multivitamin, which is the micronutrients I've been talking about, magnesium, B vitamins, folate, uh, vitamin K. It's just stuff people aren't getting enough of. They're not getting enough from their diets. And um, they gave older adults, so these were people that were 65 and older, and um, there was three different trials of this study. It was called the COSMO trial. And there's about 5,000 participants in total. And the evidence was clear that just giving them a multivitamin improved cognition. And it slowed brain aging, which was it, it was estimated to slow brain aging by about two years. And I, this is like, it's so, it's it's funny because 10 years ago, I was like doing, I was out there podcast talk, you know, talking on podcast about 
huge studies that were coming out saying enough is enough. Multivitamins are a waste of money. Don't buy them. And they were saying the exact opposite. And they were terrible studies. And I like tore them apart. Uh, but here we are 10 years later. Complete full opposite, circle, baby. Full circle. What's the easiest thing you can do? Like, does that mean a young person can take a multivitamin and it's going to immediately make them, you know, I probably not. At 20 But IQ it's insurance. Points. Yeah, it's it's something that you can start now. And certainly older adults, it made a difference. So that that's one. Mm-hmm. Um, another one is, again, I mentioned that there's other, these phytochemicals in plants that are beneficial. They're in vegetables and they're in fruits. So blueberries. Uh, blueberry extract or even the equivalent of one cup of blueberries. This has been done. Like the equivalent of one cup of blueberries improves cognition, executive function. It inc- it improves um, memory, um, also processing speed. So that's something like if you're like, you know, uh, fast reaction time. I guess it's more relevant for like maybe someone who's athletic. But, you know fine motor coordination, things like that. Um, multiple studies showing this. I mean, there's been meta-analyses showing it this is across the lifespan. There's been studies in kids. There's been studies in middle-aged adults, and there's been studies in older adults, and it's clear. Blueberries make you smarter, and they make you feel better. At least they make me feel better. So Blueberries um, are the king of fruits. I think, I mean, it's between blueberries, raspberries, and pineapple, I think, for like the top spot in my world of fruits. Blueberries. Yeah? Yeah? No, blueberries are, so they have something in them called anthocyanins, and it's what gives the blueberries their like pigmentation. Raspberries have them too. Blueberries are very concentrated in in them. Um, They also have, so anthocyanins are a type of polyphenol. They're actually a flavonoid. They're a type of polyphenol. Polyphenols are a, a, a sort of wide class of phytochemicals. And phytochemicals, there's a lot of them, lots of different types of them. And they really are beneficial in humans. And like I said, there's randomized controlled trials comparing giving this to to a placebo. And if it was bad for you, then it would be clear, right? It's good for you. Hmm. So uh, blueberries are are at the top of the list for that, uh, for improving cognitive function. Low-hanging fruit, how easy is it to eat a cup of blueberries a day? I eat two. It's literally hard to not eat a cup of blueberries. It's hard not to. Yeah. So that that would be another one. Um, I think another one on my list would be similar to that would be cocoa polyphenol. So like from from like dark chocolate. Um, they have another type of polyphenol called catechins. And um, the best one. So there have been studies, lots of studies on this. And it, it's mixed on this. So some studies have shown benefits. They increase blood flow to the brain. They increase, you know, vascular flow. So you can get an immediate effect where, you know, if you increase blood flow to the brain, which is what exercise does, right? But we're talking low-hanging fruits, easy to do, take a pill. That would be um, something to do. It is, it's is—it's improved cognition, executive function. And there's a type called Cocovia, and I have no affiliation with them. But they've published their they, – they have studies published with their um, proprietary blend, which is, again, um, one of the highest concentrated, I would say, cocoa – up flavanols out there, the catechins. Consumer labs tested them, and I've seen I've seen the data. It's it's very clear they're very high in in, in the, they just outcompete all the other brands out there, and they also have the lowest contaminants. So they're really uh, a good but expensive way to get those cocoa flavanols, which are really good. And then the other one would be for cognition would be lutein, which I mentioned earlier. It's in egg yolks, not very concentrated. It's in kale, very highly concentrated in kale, almost 24 milligrams in three kale leaves. And I say three kale leaves because that's what I put in my smoothie. Mm. So I've calculated it. But um, so there's 24 milligrams of lutein. So lutein is a type of carotenoid like beta carotene, like lycopene in tomatoes. You've heard of those things before. Well, lutein is in that same category. It is a carotenoid. It accumulates in the rods and the cones of your eye. It protects against singlet oxygen from blue light, like this light we're looking at, and also the sunshine when you go outside. That damages our eyes. It causes macular degeneration. And so lutein and zeaxanthin is another carotenoid. They're in greens, and they protect against that. But they also accumulate in the brain. And um, there have been a variety of studies. So there's been observational studies correlating plasma levels of lutein and zeaxanthin with certain cognitive scores. So like crystallized intelligence, older adults that have lutein and zeaxanthin higher levels have more crystallized intelligence. So that's the ability to use all the information you learned over a lifetime and like use it. (laughs) Um, There's been randomized controlled trials looking at giving 
eight milligrams of lutein. Now, I said 24 is in three kale. So they give eight milligrams of lutein and something like 23 milligrams of zeaxanthin to older adults, and it improves neural neural efficiency. So this is the ability to basically your your neurons can function with less energy, which is nice. So that obviously improves cognitive function because it's a very energy demanding process. So so lutein uh, you is another one. Choline. Yeah, I know it's in eggs. Choline, yeah. yeah. You know, cholinergic's generally very important for brain function. It is, yeah. It's it's an important um, it's important for brain. And there's been studies actually um, with pregnant women. If you give pregnant women about 500 milligrams of choline per day, their children score better on intel- um, the <laughs> intelligence no test. Yes. So, oh so I learned God. about this, of course, when I was pregnant, and I was like. Well, it was actually before I was pregnant, but I was like figuring out like what I'm going to do. Like, what do I need? Yeah. And that's why I, I ate so many eggs during pregnancy because I also supplemented. But now you've got like mastermind babies. I do. Yeah. <laughs> wow. But so choline is also important. Yeah, for sure. Brain function. But that it comes down to, again, getting, trying to get everything you need from your food. Um, and then omega-3s. So there's been so many randomized control trials on omega-3s, improving cognition, especially when they're, it's, it, it has to be two grams or more. That's where you'll get the the mixed data. If it's like, oh, we gave them 500 milligrams, it wasn't enough. So the studies that are consistently showing improvements in cognitive function are at least two grams a day of the omega-3. So that's my that's my sort of, I think, low-hanging fruit for, for cognitive function, things you can do 